next directory is slash etc this actually contains all the configuration files so now this is one of the most important directory in the hierarchy and you should really pay attention slash etc if we go into slash etc and do an ls so you can see that this one have a lot of configuration file for example we did configure we did install the ssh right the ssh server the configuration for that ssh server is also present in here if we do ssh ssh t config oh actually you know let's just use less etc ssh sshd config here this is the configuration file for sshd which is a service that actually lets you access the server remotely over the network so now as a rule of thumb if you are looking for a config file for any service this is the first place to look for it's most probably in a location uh, that is like you know slash etc and the service name then something dot conf it's not always like dot conf it doesn't have to be for example in the case of ssh config it is slash etc ssh sshd underscore config but most probably it is under the slash etc directory slash dev this does not contain removable media this actually only contains stuff that are not removable including hard drive so hard drive memory uh, the dev null dev zero etc are all present in dev but if you connect a pen drive to your system it's not actually present in slash dev it's usually present in slash media now another important directory is slash home this is where all the home directory is if i go to slash home here you can see there is a home directory for my username and so with all the files that we messed with in the previous session the next one would be mnt this is where we mount devices there is nothing here because we haven't mounted anything for example if you add a new drive to this installation for example you usually mount it under slash mnt another one is slash opt this usually contains custom softwares or custom installation this is like a completely optional directory you can install anything in here usually we install stuff that we download instead of installed using a package manager like if you are downloading a, a jar file or uh, downloading a zip file and extracting it it usually goes into the slash opt here we haven't downloaded anything so the slash opt is empty another one is slash sbin this usually contains the root users binaries s bin super user binaries if we go into slash s bin and uh, if we do an ls here you can see there are a lot of commands again this is similar to bin except that this how commands that are more specific to admin or the root user so next one would be slash user this is where the user utilities i mean this is actually one of the most common directory where you will install packages if we go into slash user there are like a few stuff here so user bin this is the directory where you install user related files sorry user related binaries for example remember the command that we used grep it's actually present here here there so let me just demonstrate what exactly it means if you do user sorry user bin grep this is exactly same as you would do just grep for example if i do there this is similar to what we did before instead of using the command just grep we use user bin so now how did it work i'll actually explain how that works in some time but for now let's move on to the next directory slash temp which everybody knows you know temporary stuff if we go into slash temp this will have temporary files or folders created by processes or even the os itself 
whenever we reboot the machine the temporary directory gets cleared so don't keep anything important there another directory is proc slash proc which contains the process information so this is an interesting directory if we go into slash proc so proc is the directory that contains all the process information i think we will talk about the slash proc directory in detail in a future video but for now let's just go ahead so another directory is slash lib this contains shared libraries i'll give another exercise research about shared libraries so if we go into slash lib this contains all the libraries that are required or that are used by different programs here there are few different directories that are similar which are lib lib32 lib64 and lib x32 you should actually research about them uh, in this shared libraries research let's go back to what i was trying to explain before how does the command like cp or mv or rm just work by entering just the command and not the full path as i have shown before cp is just another binary file located at slash bin slash cp but you don't have to enter slash bin slash cp to for it to work you just have to enter cp and it works now how does that work this is made possible by using something called a path variable so what is a path variable so in linux we have something called environment variables if we go here and do print env this will show all the environment variable for this process in this case the process is the shell itself remember we are in a bash shell so this shows the command print env shows the environment variables for this command sorry environment variables for the shell that we are logged into at this moment so there is one environment variable shell uh, there's environment variable shell which has specified the shell pwd is the current working directory and there are like a lot of, lot of other environment variables and this is the one that we are most interested in at this moment it's called path so if you look here you can see that path equals slash user slash user slash local slash sbin colon slash user local bin user sbin user bin sbin and bin so what it means is when you enter any command for example ls the shell first looks for a command called ls in this directory then in this directory then in this directory and this and this and this so it keeps searching until it finds a binary in any of this directory and if it didn't find in any of this directory that's where it gives command not found so here i just made up this random command called adasd so what happens if i create a binary with that name i'm going to create a file with that name sorry not binary and don't worry about this uh, i'm just creating a simple bash script so now here i have a file called adasd i mean let me just move into a better name foo that sounds good so now if i type the command foo it says command not found because you know there is no such command called foo but we have a file here called foo right so how do i make it so that when i execute foo it actually execute this file so as i said before we can see the environment variables using the command print env and we can use the pipe grep to see just the path variable there is a better way to do it just using the command echo so echo displays anything including a variable or a string so if you do echo dollar path it will display the path environment variable so now if i want to execute this file called foo here i can simply copy this file to any of this directory and it will work let me just demonstrate it if i copy it to a uh, slash bin you can see that 
push press enter now if i execute this this will not work it will give an uh, error saying permission denied that is because we have not given it the execute permission i will talk about permissions in a future video but for now let me just give it the execute permission so if i type in foo there our command worked. that is because we just copied that file into the slash bin directory now we don't have to copy it to that bin directory we can actually manipulate this path variable so let me just let me just move it back from the bin directory and i have moved it here let's say i want to have a directory a bin directory or you know what we don't want to call it a bin directory let's just call it tools directory and i want to have all the tools or all the scripts in that directory to be executable without having to call the full path i'm going to move the full script into the tools directory so right now we are in slash root and we have a tools directory and we have we have a script named foo under the tools directory what do we need to do we need to be able to execute foo without having to type in the full path which is slash root tools foo so you do this by changing the path n1 variable so as i showed before the path variable is this you change the value of an n1 variable using the command export we are changing the value of path so we give export path equals so what we need to add we need to add this directory to this list it is slash root slash tools slash foo colon and we want to keep all of these two otherwise none of our commands going to work so we give dollar path now if i do echo dollar path you can see that we have added the slash root tools foo directory into this sorry i made a mistake this is the file name itself i should not have added the file name itself i just need to give the directory name so let me just change the path variable here since i have already updated this path variable and i want to remove this i can simply change it to equals copy the entire thing and paste it in the uh, double quotes and i want to remove the foo because we are giving the directory here not the file names so if i do control l to make things clearer we have sorry it's not echo it should be export export path slash root tools and then whatever that was there before and we did that and if we double check it okay we changed it so now if i do foo it works again that is because we have added the slash root tools into the path variable the path variable is very important we modify it and manipulate it a lot especially when installing new tools or scripts so it's important that you understand how this works that's it for this video see you in the next one